So you're about to see what the Jewish wedding was like during Jesus' time, and it helps you understand those parables that he was talking about in Matthew chapter 24 and 25. Watch this. So what happened in the Jewish wedding? Well, first of all, there was a bride and a groom, right? And Jesus talked about that a lot. So the groom that would want they would want to get engaged, but that was like the same thing as being married back in those days. It was called being betrothed. And they would he, the groom would approach the father and the bride, and he would pay a great price for her. And that may seem weird to us, but what it was doing is he was showing value to this bride. Like, this is like, I'm coming back to get her. This is assurance that I've paid a great price. I've invested that I want her so much. I, she is of great value to me like that pearl of great price, right? And they would have the cup together, a cup of wine, and they'd have bread together, and they'd break the bread and the wine, and they would have what was like communion. And remember, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life when he gave communion. And he said, take this, this is my body, broken and given up for you, and take it and eat it. Do this in remembrance of me. That's what we do as the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. We break bread and we remember, just like the Jewish wedding. So they would break bread together and they would have wine together to seal the deal. That was the covenant that they would have together. And that was the Jewish tradition of Jesus's time. Well, let's keep on going. Then he would pay a great price, right? Many, many shekels would be paid to the father. And this was just showing that he valued that bride. Well, Jesus paid a great, great price on the cross. We know that. And that's what we see here. He shed his blood, his own blood, and suffered immensely just to save you and me if you would receive him. So the church was likened to like a pearl, I believe, because Jesus talked about that parable. Remember the, the, the man bought the field and he paid a great, great price, sold everything he had to get that precious pearl. Many of us said that that was speaking about us. We sell everything we have to get that precious pearl, which is heaven. No, no, I don't think so. I think that God himself, he sold everything he had in his son, the father. His son was everything to him. And he gave up his son. His son paid the ultimate price for you and me because we are that pearl of great price to him. Or that precious gem that he has found. And he wants us. He, he wants to keep us. So, so that's a little picture of it there. But John 14, we see this. Jesus said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Some translations say mansions, right? I am going there to prepare a place for you. For you, my friend. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I am coming again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you also will be. Now, the sound of the trumpet, the horn, the ram's horn, right? The shofar is sounded when? When Jesus returns. We know that there's going to be the sound of the trumpet when he returns. But what was Jesus just talking about here in the book of John? Where I'm going, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And where I'm going there, you will also be. When will we be there? When he comes back to get us, right? So I'm going to explain this really quick to you about this whole thing about the Jewish wedding of Jesus' time. Again, remember they had the cup together. They were being betrothed. That that son who wanted to marry that bride, he would then leave. Sometimes it was a different town, a different place. He would leave And she would be engaged to him, belong to him. She even wore a veil over her head to to show that she belonged to him so that the other young men would not uh, come and hit on her, basically, right? Trying to hook up with her. And she would be waiting for him patiently. And she would also keep oil and one of those lamps, those old lamps with a wick in it and the oil full in there and extra oil so that she could find her way around and see, and she was waiting for him to be ready. Her bags were packed. She was ready to go, ready to leave at a moment's notice. But oftentimes, this son would be gone for a long time, sometimes well over a year. And at that time, he went back to the father, 
back to his father's house. And back then, they had many rooms attached to the, to the father's house. And the son would start building this room that was attached. And he would prepare it, and he would decorate this room and make it beautiful and preparing it for his bride to be, right? For what? For their seven-day honeymoon. Just like there's going to be a seven-year tribulation period where the bride of Christ is going to be with the groom, Jesus, right? How do I know that? The Bible says it. Also, it even says it in the Old Testament. We look up stories like Joseph. Remember that seven-year time of great trouble? His bride was already with him, in the palace with him. He was second in command of Egypt. He was in a beautiful place, and his bride was with him. And that time of great trouble came. And what happened? Then Israel was saved, right? Read your Old Testament. It tells you a lot about the New Testament, especially to understand books like the book of Revelation. But anyway, back to that bride. So he would, the bridegroom actually, so he's preparing this room. And he didn't know when it was going to be finished. But finally, one day, the father would look, because he would check on it periodically, and he would say, it is finished. Go get your bride. And then the son knew it was time, and he would rush off with his friends, some of his friends carrying the shofar, the trumpet, and some of them went to go shout in the streets, the bridegroom is here, the bridegroom is here, (laughs) right? And she would hear it, and others in the city would hear it. And she had her friends that were the bridesmaids that were typically the virgins, right? And they would join her. And they would get their wicks, their, their, their oil lamps, and their extra oil, and they had it, and they would light it because they had to find their way out of the house. Sometimes it could be really dark. It could be a super dark night, and they didn't want to trip or stumble on anything. So they made their way out to the main street where the bridegroom was as he was shouting, his friends were shouting, and the trumpet was sounded. And then they would go off and celebrate and dance in the streets on their way to back to the father's house, that place he prepared for them, and they would have a seven-year honeymoon period and celebrations and feasts. Isn't that amazing, you guys? That's what Jesus was talking about. So we're going to go more into the scripture. Watch this. So we're in John 14, so that where I am, there you also will be. So he's speaking of that place in the Father's house that he's been preparing for 2,000 years now, right? So the shofar was sounded in the streets, and they would grab those lamps. Here it is again. And the the oil had to be in there to keep those lamps burning bright and hot so they knew where to go. Jesus said this, But at midnight there there finally was a shout, Behold the groom! Come out to meet him! That's what Jesus was talking about, you guys, the Jewish wedding of his time. Here we see in Psalm 45 the same thing. So in the Old Testament, we see that same picture. Look at this. She will. This is a messianic psalm, by the way. Throughout the years, many knew this was about the Messiah. And he's speaking about a bride going to the king right here. Watch this. She will be brought to the king in colorful garments. The virgins, her companions who follow her, will be brought to you. See? And then Matthew chapter 25, Jesus continues, Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take extra oil. Oil speaks of the Holy Spirit, my friend. Olive oil always spoke of the Holy Spirit. You're about to see that. Matthew 25 says, But the prudent ones right? The ones that were prepared, they took oil in flasks with their lamps. Now, while the groom was delaying, they they all became drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight, there finally was a shout, behold the groom! One of the bridegroom's friends shouted from the street, right? Behold the groom, he's here, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up, and trim their lamps. That means they lit their lamps. They're ready to go. But the foolish virgins said to the prudent ones, give us some of your oil, right? They didn't have enough to to see, right? But the foolish virgins said to the prudent, give us some of your oil. They wanted more. They wanted their oil because our lamps are going out. The olive oil represented what? The Holy Spirit, you guys. The Holy Spirit. Here in 1 Samuel chapter 16, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. 
So back to what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 25. However, the prudent ones answered no. There must most certainly would not be enough for us and you too. So instead, go to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the groom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast. Now you see it clearly, right? The doors were open, and they went in to the wedding feast together. Matthew 25 says this, Then Jesus said, And the door was shut. Whoa, that's scary. The door was shut, and then what happens? Storm clouds come, right? Just like 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says that when they shout out peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them, speaking of that tribulation period. Well, it's like Noah's time. Jesus referenced Noah's time as as the end. And who was saved in the ark floating above the earth in that prepared place, in those prepared rooms? Who was it? It was Noah and his family. Matthew 24 continues, But about that day and hour, this is Jesus talking about the, the end times, about that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the Son, but the Father alone. Remember? The Father in that Jewish wedding, in that, that, that before, you know, when they were engaged, the father was the only one knew, that knew when it was ready, when it was time to go get the bride. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah, Jesus said. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving to marriage, just like today, right? We see all kinds of different marriages and weddings going on. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, and they did not understand, until the flood came and took them all away. Sudden destruction, right? So will be the coming of the Son of Man. In Second Peter, we see this. He says that God did not spare the ancient world but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness. He preached when those people were mocking him, right? With seven others. How many churches are in the book of Revelation? Oh, that's right, seven. Seven churches. With seven others when he brought a flood upon the world. So who did he save? Noah and seven others. Remember this. In the book of Revelation, we see the seven golden lampstand, like the menorah in the holy place, right? They are the seven churches. In Matthew 25, Jesus says, Yet later, the other virgins also came back to that story, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered. They were saying, basically, they were knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door, right? Lord, Lord, open up for us. Open the door to heaven for us. Yet later, the other virgins said that. And then what happened? But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. They, he didn't even know them. They were never filled with the Holy Spirit. That oil, they were never, they never really were born again and gave their life to Jesus. So Jesus says, be on alert. Be on the alert then, because you do not know the day nor the hour, right? Of what? Of his return. That's what we see there, you guys. It speaks of him coming back for first for his bride, like a thief in the night. Later, after all that destruction on earth for seven years, he comes at the very end of that, and that's not like a thief in the night. That's something that's that's they're going to be ready to see. They're going to know he's coming back. <laughs> so, hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, you want to hit that button down below, but also hit this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You will truly be blessed by that. So click on that playlist.